morning high tides. I hope that you guys all had a great week this week. And I hope that all your parents had fun last night at the open house. Next week is here. So today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about the queen. I'm sure you all know who she was, Queen Elizabeth II, an influential leader, a powerful monarch, and a constant in our ever-changing lives, sadly passed away last Thursday, September 8, 2022. It was a sad, sad day for all of us. So let's talk a little bit about Her Majesty. On September 8th, 2022, the longest reigning monarch of Britain, Queen Elizabeth II passed away at age 96 at the Bollamore Castle in Scotland. In honor of her legacy, we'd like to share with you all a piece to remember her and pay tribute in light of her recent death. To further explain why she became such a significant historical figure and why the monarchy remains so important to those raised within that culture, we selected one of our very own Beach High teachers. My name is Nina Duval. Um, I was born in the north of England and I'm sitting here in my classroom with the Queen behind me. All the kings and queens, and there's only really been two, no, it's been three, I've, I've always talked about doing their very best and serving and looking after the people of England. Mm -hmm. To some extent, that's happened. Um, but I think there's another very interesting thing about the monarchy, which makes me think probably that it has a useful function in England. It is a constitutional monarchy. It's written into the British Constitu mm -hmm. Constitution. It doesn't really have much power, um, but it is a symbol of power. When um, people elect a, a new government mm -hmm. or a new prime minister, the prime minister elect has to go and ask permission to the queen yeah. to form a government. Mm -hmm. And so, what does that mean? So it means that the, the prime minister, or, the, or male or female, um, has an authority which has to be approved by the queen. Um, and I think that the Queen represents some kind of symbol of power. Um, there were a lot of things I didn't know, particularly um, when in, during the committal part of the Queen's funeral, that was at, at uh, Windsor Castle, when she was laid to rest and put in the vault. The, the kind of very antiquated procedure that has to be gone through with the next King taking the orb and the scepter and the crown off her coffin. Mm -hmm. huh? and then the Lord Chamberlain breaking the baton to signify the end of her reign. Uh, uh, that was obviously a very old practice and um, having lived in America for almost 30 years, I kind of enjoyed yeah. experiencing this old coach. And remember, I've never experienced the death of a monarch. So. Yeah. And as I, as I said, she's been part of my life, my entire life. Yeah. As Ms. Duval mentioned, during Elizabeth II's rule, a monarchy was finally able to be viewed closely by the public eye, unlike previous years where the level of attention was not nearly as intense due to a lack of technology and mainstream media. As her death astounded people globally, her funeral plans were already in motion. Her funeral began at 11 a.m. on September 19th at the Westminster Abbey, where hundreds of thousands of people lined up to pay their respects to the Queen waiting in queue, along with millions viewing it virtually. Her Majesty's coffin was then transferred to the Windsor Castle for the committal service at St. George's Chapel, though the Queen's official burial will take place during a private service next to her husband, Prince Philip, at King George VI Memorial Chapel, still on Windsor Castle grounds. Queen Elizabeth II's death has impacted many and must be a great deal of pain for her family. Our sincerest condolences go out to the royal family. May the Queen rest in peace. Few things remain true and timeless. Art is one exception, as it will exist as long as we do. The interpretation and meaning of art will probably be debated forever, too. So, what is the meaning of art? How long have you been drawing for? On and off, we like draw like for periods of time, but like, I guess like two years or three. I've been making art for since ever since I can remember, since I was six years old. I've been drawing and painting, uh, well, I painted, I started painting out of high school. Like I was scared to uh, make a mistake. And then he was like, uh, you just paint over it. And then it just kind of hit me that, oh, duh. It's, he told me that like, no, there's no reason to be scared. Like you just paint right over it and you're good, you know? So then after that, I fell in love with it. And you know, it's just my thing. I've been doing art all my life since I was a kid. All kids are drawing. They start drawing at school or even earlier. How did you choose 
art. I don't know, I was so like art, I guess, and I wanted to like replicate it. And then I got into like different type of drawings and developed. Well, I think every kid is an artist. Um, you know, you just, uh, anybody that's ever tried it as a kid, you know, you just love expressing yourself, doing all these things. But um, I like to say that the reason I got really into art is because I had a good support system. You know, I always pull my classes to say like, who had a bad experience with an art teacher? And a lot of people have had very bad experiences. And I don't get it because they, a lot of the times it's in elementary school or middle school. And it's just like, oh, you suck or you're bad. You can't draw. And I'm like, who's out there telling these kids that they're not good at this, right? Like, you're a kid. Of course you're not good at it. It's fine. <laughs> I was lucky enough to have parents that supported me the whole way and teachers that told me, hey, you're kind of good at this. You keep going. And, and I just kept going, right? It, it felt awesome. And then as I got more strong in, in, in my drawing, um, I just started motivating myself. I, I loved expressing myself. Um, in high school, I would just always draw like my life, but it's symbolically. So I was always drawing myself as an octopus and my friends were all their animals and stuff. If you have that drive in you and it won't stop, it won't stop no matter what you do, no matter what careers you, you try, then you can't really say that you choose art. It's, it sounds cheesy, but it's like art chooses you, you know? Like, do you expect to include like art into your career in the future? Yeah, I think so. I like something there. I'll, I'll add it to something, some, some. I knew I always wanted to do something with art and I had a crossroads when I was in college. My professor um, asked me like, cause I was gonna go to fine arts instead of art education. And he told me, hey, do you want a salary? Do you want money? <laughs> because being just a fine artist is hard to just make money like that. So I thought it was a good idea and I was already kind of teaching. So I, it was a natural step for me and um, I loved it. So after that, I, I, I'm very lucky. I'm a very lucky person that I have a job where I get to do exactly what I love to do, which is talk a, <laughs> and be uh, art. I don't know if I expected to be in, 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 in art, but I knew I really wanted it. So whenever you really want something and you just put a lot of your energy into that, you get it. So what does art mean to you? I guess it means different things, but like how I see it is like an escape. Like I pass my time, I have so, so much time on my hands and like I want to create something. But I think art is anything that has to do with intention and trying to do it with a certain attention to beauty and attention to style and attention to you know with a, with a lot of effort so you can't just you can't just throw something on the floor and I call it art but if I do it on purpose and I put it there on purpose and I say that's art now it's art for me it's expression pure expression and I use it more as like a therapeutic thing right and it's always been very helpful so I try to give that to my students as well right but art means something different for, for each person but to me art is about expression you know, everyone has an inner world inside of them. Everyone has like an imagination. Everyone has, has dreams, has fears, has ambitions, has an, an, an idea of what uh, a better world would mean. Uh, you know, if you close your eyes, you have all these images going through your brain. That's your inner world. All your feelings, all your emotions, all your experiences, all your memories, that's your inner world. So to me, art is anything that brings out that inner world out of you and makes it, gives it a shape, gives it a form that is concrete, that is tangible, and that is visible for anyone outside of you. Art is a fluid term. Whatever it means to you is probably what matters most, just like some people's favorite color. So what does green mean to you? This is Esther Costco here for Beach Film News. I'm uh, here with it's Grace Brightman. What does green mean to you? Green. It's like giving earth. Wealth, money. Each day. Um, I guess kind of just happiness. Like green is my favorite happiness. color, I don't know. It's my favorite color. Green makes me happy, it's my favorite color. When I think green it is my favorite nice color because it reminds you of the earth. To me it just signifies like, like happiness and like being in like a good mood and stuff. I mean, it's kind of like nature and how like nature is like coexisting and that how your mental state and stuff nature outside the other ordinary things forest and grass 
money. Ten people tend to be angry because of uh, Sandy. Because you're not out like Start with Hello Week. We gotta be nice to each other. We gotta spread. We gotta spread awareness. We gotta spread kindness. So to me, green means a form of peace because we gotta stay peaceful in this world. You know, it's a favorite symbol of mine. Peace up, guys. Spread peace. So this is Coco. Hey Coco. If you can tell, Coco is a service dog. Uh. And she is adorable. Yes, she is. You know, one thing that people need to know about service dogs is even though she looks like she's just like chilling like any other dog, you don't pet a service dog's face because she's still working. You can pet her on, on the belly, on the back, but you don't pet the service dog on the face. And you see here, it says, service dog, do not touch, ignore me. Very good, Coco. And so when you see a service dog, you actually ignore them because they're working and you talk directly to the person. So if you're in the presence of a service dog, what's the one name you do not say? The name of the dog. If you call out Coco, you're distracting her. So. If I say goodbye, what do you say? Goodbye. And that's it. So goodbye. Just a reminder, High Tides, there's no school this Monday, so have a restful weekend. Go enjoy some green, because green is all around us. Wearing green. When green is all there is to be, it could make you wonder why. But why wonder? No. Why wonder? No. I'm green. No. It'll do fine. It's, about it's beautiful. Hello. And I think it's what I want to be. What's your name?